Have you ever just looked at a game with an art style so well realized and inviting that you'd almost swear that you could reach out and touch it? Well if you haven't yet, you might find yourself doing just that when you embark on the dioramic journey of the visually palpable Yoshi's Crafted World. Development studio Goodfeel seems to have a pretty good feel for crafting game worlds out of common textile materials in ways that are visually compelling and stimulating. And Yoshi's Crafted World might, in some ways, be Goodfeel's most refined iteration of this thematic trend. While the previous fabric theme entries definitely showcased how good artistic visual design could lead to very plausible looking textures and materials, even on low-spec hardware, Yoshi's Crafted World takes things a few steps further and showcases how good artistic level design, coupled with modern rendering techniques, can lead to plausible looking worlds with tons of artistic flair. The materials aren't just well realized in the abstract either, they're grounded in the reality of their respective game levels to the point where making real life one to one replicas of said levels is actually an achievable goal, which is pretty impressive. Even more impressive is the fact that, with the exception of the overworld map, the game runs at a near faultless 60 frames per second, whether you're playing in dock mode or handheld mode. Clearly the developer's decision to use Unreal Engine 4 for this game is paying dividends. From the engine's robust feature set, we can see many of its bells and whistles incorporated into the game in some way, shape, or form, like the pronounced depth of field effect, which emulates the optical phenomenon in real-world photography, where light rays that enter through a camera's aperture, and by way of certain angles with respect to the camera's focal plane, will cause certain parts of an image to become out of focus, while also transforming specular highlights and light sources into whatever shape the camera's aperture is comprised of. This phenomenon is known as bokeh depth of field in real world photography, though the implementation in Yoshi's Crafter world is of much lower quality, even if it is a few steps up from basic Gaussian smoothing. Other notable rendering features on display include global illumination, where diffuse light appears to interreflect from one surface to other adjacent surfaces before eventually reaching the eye, Screen space ambient occlusion, a shading technique limited to only what's visible on the screen where an algorithm can determine what areas should be darkened when ambient light is obstructed by objects located inside shadow maps. Real-time refraction, a rendering solution that mimics the behavior of light as it passes from one medium to the next, distorting the appearance of refracted objects in the process. Detailed normal mapping, a texture mapping technique used to give models the illusion of more polygonal detail, complexity, and depth than they actually have. Mesh deformation and tangent space normal mapping, where 3D meshes reuse normal maps even when the shape or orientation of the mesh morphs dynamically, allowing for dynamic shading of deforming materials. And probably the most important aspect of the engine's feature set, and probably the primary reason Goodfield elected Unreal as their engine of choice, physically based materials. If the goal is to develop levels that look like they've literally been handcrafted by children, the materials themselves need to look absolutely convincing and natural and it appears that the developers have come pretty close to achieving that goal. Particularly of note is the representation of napped or pile fabric, like the plush material that Yoshi's model is comprised of. In the real world, the nap of woven textile materials like plush, velvet, corduroy, or terry cloth is raised from the base surface and travels in one direction. Because of their unique microstructures compared to typical smooth or rough surfaces, Nap fabrics can appear brighter in some spots and darker in other spots depending on which way the nap is traveling compared to the base weave pattern, even when all of said spots are exposed to the same light source coming from a specific direction. As you can imagine, calculating the lighting of nap fabric is not as straightforward as it is for other common materials. The lighting for nap fabrics need to account for anisotropic specularity in order to pick up highlights in different directions from the same light source. A true analytical approach to an isotropic lighting of materials that fall under a classification of fabric fibers or hair follicles is typically too expensive to be used in video games. So developers usually implement less accurate but more efficient solutions that can still convey the defining characteristics of these materials. And really that goes for all of these so-called physically based materials like foils and other metals, plastic, cardboard, paper, earthenware, etc as a true physical simulation of light interacting with these materials is simply not possible. So if you know what to look for, you can easily tell when the rendering of these materials starts to fall apart. Like we can see here with the anisotropic highlights lacking the shading of the rest of Yoshi's model when it's in shadow due to the highlights not respecting the laws of energy conservation. This rendering flaw is actually quite common with most materials in most video games due to the custom lighting and shading setups that most developers use to approximate the look of physically based materials without having to do the complex calculations needed to render said materials photorealistically. 
Nevertheless, to the untrained eye, the materials in Yoshi's crafted world look close enough to their real life counterparts that most people will perceive them as appearing to be true to life. So we can't praise the developers enough for a job well done, especially when this game has such a rock solid frame rate. On the other hand, it should not be understated how much of a visual compromise it took for Goodfield to reach their performance target. While there are a host of graphical effects featured in Yoshi's Crafted World, it would seem that those effects and the game's fluid frame rate came at the gargantuan expense of the game's image quality, which according to our Pixiconum results, pegs the game's average internal resolution to run at 1024x576 in dock mode and can drop as low as 640x360 in handheld mode. These resolutions are significantly below the HD standard for a game that's running on an HD platform, and it's hard not to question if all of the visual eye candy was worth the enormous sacrifice to the game's image quality, especially because the resolution wasn't the only thing that took a hit. We can see here that the texture filtering is limited to trilinear filtering instead of anisotropic filtering, which means that at oblique angles, the farther the texture is in the distance, the blurrier it will appear, as the mip maps for the respective texture get lower in resolution with distance. While trilinear filtering isn't as unsightly as something like bilinear filtering, which doesn't even blend the seams between different mid maps together, it's still pretty unpleasant to see at oblique angles. Another compromise can be found in the directional shadows, which are pretty low in resolution, and unfortunately the eggs that Yoshi collects don't have any shadows to speak of. Now to be fair with regard to these compromises, Goodfield did attempt to mitigate some of the drawbacks by implementing an image enhancing feature from the Unreal Engine known as Temporal Upsampling which attempts to clean up the muddy images by looking at multiple frames in succession and using the accumulation of that data to upsample the final result. It's important to note that the UI isn't rendering until after the temporal filtering pass in the pipeline, which is why the text on the screen is crystal clear even when the internal resolution of the game is super low. Nevertheless, this filtering method isn't working in miracles and the game still has a very soft look to it, on top of introducing its own artifacts like we can see with the dithering in this frame after the motion blur has been activated. So if you're the kind of person who values clarity over frame rate, the image quality cutbacks might be a bit too much for you. At the same time, the entire thematic premise of the game hinges on the believability of its materials and handcrafted environment. And with a smoother frame rate allowing for better motion clarity and subsequently more fluid animation, it could be argued that Goodfield's priorities weren't entirely misplaced after all. Overall, I'd have to say that from both a rendering and technically artistic perspective, Yoshi's Crafted World is probably one of the most impressive games to ever grace the Nintendo Switch platform. It boasts many of the visual features found in modern AAA titles and does so at a buttery smooth frame rate, which is not something that can be said for many titles on the Switch. And have everything, I suppose. Well that concludes our technical analysis of Yoshi's Crafted World. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more coverage on all things gaming. Cheers!